up my fellow gamers welcome back to Joe Cobra Gaming I hope you're all doing great and today I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on E3 uh, the Microsoft E3 that is uh, which took place on Sunday and I'm going to go through some of the things that I thought were really cool some of the uh, things I didn't think were cool and an overall impressions of the event itself We've got uh, 60 plus games, some of them exclusive, some of them third party as usual. And that's basically what we're going to be talking about today. And I thought that there was a huge variety for gamers, simulators, shooters, RPGs, platformers. They, they had it all. The first game to catch my attention is to be the Star Wars game, the Jedi, the new Jedi game that they're releasing. And I was pleased to see that this is third person. Uh, I think I'm, we're all getting fed up of first person Star Wars games, especially when they're not done properly. And uh, yeah, so it's nice to see a third person uh, Star Wars game. And it looks great. The combat looks great. Uh, it's got the your, force, your, your typical force powers that you expect in a Star Wars game. And I'm really, really interested to see how that turns out. Uh, not long to wait. That's one of the games that is coming out this year. So uh, that's definitely on, on my list and uh, look forward to getting my hands on that then we had uh what i thought at the start was alan wake it turned out to be blair witch uh definitely a surprise definitely one that uh, i'm pretty sure no one saw coming it's obviously a horror game for those who have seen blair witch there's not much they showed of the game but uh what we saw uh looked looked good graphically and it looked really scary and it had the the uh, classic man standing facing the wall in the corner moment uh, straight out of the Blair Witch film so again let's just see how that turns out but that's interesting and it's always good to have a horror game uh, to play in your collection then of course came the star of the show and I think many many people star of the show and that was Cyberpunk 2077 a game that all you Witcher fans out there know that it's in development and uh, we finally got a release date and it was announced by none other than the amazing Keanu Reeves which absolutely blew everyone away in the stadium I'm sure and on the internet and it was fantastic to see Keanu Reeves um, involved in the project after the trailer we realized that uh, Keanu Reeves was going to be in the game and then for him to come out and uh, present the game and give us the release date I thought was fantastic and uh, the highlight of the show so obviously that is one that I've got high on my list. It's uh, definitely a day one buy for me. CD Projekt Red have never let us down and I'm sure that's going to be probably even game of the year material, no doubt. The next thing that was pretty cool was that Ultimate Game Pass is coming to Xbox and uh, I think we all knew that was going to come eventually. It makes sense to throw everything in so your your Game Pass and your Xbox Live Gold and I'm sure it's worth going to be worth every penny just to, like the game pass was and you can also get this uh, pass currently now for one pound for one month I don't know how long that's gonna be uh, going for so make sure if you're uh, if you're interested in the ultimate pass to grab that as soon as possible then they brought in Tim Shavers from Double Fine Production and announced that they uh, have acquired that studio as well uh, as we all know from Microsoft uh, last E3 They've been acquiring a lot of studios and I think this is the way to go for them for the future. And uh, they're obviously in the background bolstering their uh, catalogue of games uh, for when the new console comes out. Which of course they're going to need to compete with the mighty Sony. So another acquisition and uh, the only game I've played of uh, their, their company is uh, uh, Psychonauts uh, back in the PlayStation days. So yeah, I mean it's great. It's another company added to the um, to the roster, uh, and I'm sure they're going to uh, bring lots of value to to Microsoft. Also, more Star Wars news as they announced the Lego Saga, which spans all the Lego films. And uh, of course, for all you Lego fans out there, I'm sure that's going to be uh, high on your list. And it's your typical Lego game. And uh, yeah, um, that's that's an, that was another surprise. I didn't see that coming either. Speaking of Lego. One that I'm definitely looking forward to is the Lego Expansion uh, DLC, which uh, there was murmurs of a few days before um, E3, um, and uh, it turns out that it was uh, it was true. And uh, I must say, I can't wait to uh, play the DLC. I'll probably be doing a review on that, so keep your eye out for that. And I really can't wait to uh, get my hands on the game and uh, drive some real cars and some Lego cars around the, what I'm sure is going to be a fascinating map. Then they showed off Gears 5. 
they showed off their new mode Escape which is a three player uh, multiplayer game mode and uh, that's new to the series along with I'm sure Horde's going to be there and the campaign and multiplayer for the campaign I would have loved to seen some more uh, and seen uh, and heard more about the story but um, yeah they didn't show any and I, I thought that was a bit strange but I guess they're focusing more on their uh, new mode escape and uh, we'll probably see more in the events coming up uh, to release date I'm sure we also had a first glimpse of the new Elite Controller 2 and uh, well you know a lot of complaints about the first controller um, not being strong enough, uh, bits and pieces falling off etc. Uh, I never bought the first one, uh, I knew there was going to be another one like there is it with anything in tech nowadays, there's always something new straight after whatever is currently available. So I don't know, I, I was looking forward to jumping in now uh, with an Elite controller but uh, for me, no matter, as, as much as it looks amazing and uh, I really like the fact that it's got a 40 hour um, battery pack uh, there and it also charges now within the case that it comes with. But, uh, you know, for the price I'm hearing, like, you know, I think it's $200 or $180, I don't know, what's that, £160 in the UK? It's a lot of money for a controller, man. That's nearly half of the price of a, of a console. Um, but yeah, I understand that it's an elite product and um, it's only for the select few that really want that but you know it's the price tag that, that spoils it for me so I don't know it's a wait and see maybe get it when it gets cheaper I thought the control looks fantastic and for those who are looking forward to a, another elite controller well you know I'm sure they're gonna it's a no-brainer for, for them then they also showed off uh, another surprise J.R.R. Tolkien's Eden Ring uh, looks to be, uh, you know, um, a fan fantasy RPG. Don't know much about it. Uh, what we saw was, uh, again, a trailer. So not much gameplay or anything like that. So, again, it's another wait and see. See how that turns out. I'm sure we'll hear more uh, as the months pass by. Moving on, they also spoke about Project Cloud. Uh, now, this sounds interesting. Uh, obviously, with the Google Stadia coming out and all these uh, prescription services whether it be Netflix or Game, or Game Pass it seems everyone's getting in on this um, this obviously is Xbox answer to Stadia and uh, basically what it's going to do is turn your Xbox into a, your, your personal server allowing you to play your Xbox games on a laptop or a, 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 an iPad or, or your phone which is for me what, the main thing I'm going to look forward to uh, doing so you know we'll see how that uh, pans out. It's not out. It's not going to take. Uh, it's not going to start till about October. So um, yeah, we'll see, wait and see with that. But uh, it sounds promising, and I'm sure Microsoft can do a good job of it. Uh, as I'm hearing, the Stadia not really being uh, what everyone thought it would be, uh, i.e. with um, lag and the uh, pricing options for it. But you know I'm sure Microsoft uh, will get it right. So it's a wait and see with that for that one. Another big uh, show for Microsoft was, of course, the Project Scarlet. Now, Project Scarlet is their next console, as we all know. And um, they didn't show anything, as we expected. Uh, it's probably still too early. All they had was uh, some of the big heads uh, at Microsoft that helped make the uh, console, talking about what it can do and the possibilities of what it will be able to do. You know... Take what you want from what they said, you know, 8K gaming, uh, faster loading times. This all sounds fantastic. I just hope they uh, they can come through with all these things. This is, of course, imperative for Microsoft to get right uh, with their next-gen console as uh, they look like they're resetting now and uh, they need to come out all guns firing with this console and the games that come with it if they are to compete with Sony. Then, of course, we had the uh, uh, announcement of Halo Infinite, which we all knew is coming. And they established that it is going to be coming out on the new Xbox, whatever that ends up being called. And uh, it makes sense. The last time uh, Halo came out with a console, and a Microsoft console was the very first Xbox, and we all know what it did for that. I'm really hoping that this game does what it did for the first Xbox for the new Xbox next year. So we only got a longish cutscene where we actually got to see the Master Chief, which is really cool. And you know, it's typical Master Chief gets his gun and it's time to fight and he's going to bring it to whatever uh, the uh, enemies are in this next game 
And I'm sure all the Halo fans out there, including me, cannot wait to see what this looks like on the new consoles. I, I'm presuming that Microsoft is going to pull out all the stops to make sure this game looks great. It's going to be out on all the other consoles, or all the other versions of the Xbox out uh, as well, I'm sure. But it's going to definitely look the, the best on the new Xbox console. So, really, um, that's about it uh, for E3. Those are the things that excited me about the show. Uh, there was plenty of uh, other games um, that uh, look great as well. But uh, they're not the games that I have on my horizon or games that I'm really, really looking forward to. But uh, one thing before I go, which I must mention as well, is the XO19 uh, event that was that is normally held in America is actually coming to London. And Phil Spencer announced uh, this. And uh, being from London, I'm super hyped. And I think it's coming in November. So, uh, oh man, yeah, I'm definitely going to attend that. Um, I've, not, I've never really attended a game show, so uh, for it to come to London is very rare, uh, a show of this, this magnitude. So I am super stoked that it's coming and uh, I will definitely be looking out for the tickets and getting my tickets as soon as possible. So guys, that's it for me and uh, I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on E3. Please leave your comments down below of what you thought of E3. It doesn't have to be the Microsoft conference, it could have been any of them. Um, tell me what you liked, tell me what you hyped for, tell me what you didn't like and uh, I'll see you guys next time on Joe Cobra Gaming take care of each other, one love, peace